coming to the leukocytic system um, in the leukocytes and uh, there is neutrophilic leukocytosis why we call this as a uh, neutrophilic leukocytosis because there is increase uh, in the leukocyte concentration to up to 20,000 uh, cells per cubic millimeter and all these are uh, influenced by the hormone that is estrogen and the um, and the glucocorticoids particularly the cortisol is responsible for the increase in the leukocytic count and immune system uh, turns uh, from the cell mediated immunity to hormone media uh, humoral mediated immunity and innate immunity and uh, the total protein levels will be increased but due to hemodilution there is a uh, protein constant decrease in the protein concentration remember that there is decrease in albumin concentration by 30 to 40 percent and globulin cut, uh, uh, concentration increases only of that of alpha globulins uh, majorly due to the alpha globulin and all this uh, cumulative effect lead to the uh, ag ratio becoming from 1.7 uh, to 1 is to 1 uh, coming to the blood coagulation factors uh, and the pregnancy is simply a hypercoagulable state that is there is increased amount of the coagulation factors in the body um, and esr also increases by approximately four times during pregnancy there is gestation thrombocytopenia that is decrease in the platelet count take place why is there a decrease uh, uh, platelet count it is due to the hemodilution first point and the second point is due to increased platelet consumption remember that um, the clotting factor 7 8 9 10 and 1 increase during pregnancy and uh, the clotting factors uh, 2 5 and 12 remain unchanged while the rest of them decrease during the pregnancy and uh, it takes approximately two weeks to normalize after the delivery um, coming to the uh, cardiovascular system the anatomical changes include there is in due to the raised diaphragm um, as a result of the growing uh, uterus uh, the heart gets pushed uh, upwards outwards and towards the left as a result of it the apex beat can be felt not at the fifth intercostal space but at the fourth intercostal space and it is not half an inch from the mid clavicular line but now it has become uh, one inch from the mid clavicular line due to its moving towards the left coming to the abnormalities uh, there might be a systolic murmur uh, can be he heard um, uh, in during the pregnancy either it can be in the apical area or in the pulmonary area there might be a mammarian murmur which takes place in the tricuspid area and uh, the ECG changes uh, show that there is a left uh, axis deviation or sometimes even there is a normal deviation also might be there. The systolic murmur uh, in the apical or pulmonary area is due to the hemodilution concept or due to decreased viscosity of the blood. The mammarian murmur is felt at the second or third uh, ICS that is intercostal, uh, third intercostal space it can be felt and even this is also due to the increased blood flow through the internal memory vessels due to increased blood flow in the internal memory vessels we feel a mammarian murmur also uh, and in the ecg uh, left axis deviation will be uh, seen and uh, uh, S3 sound that is the third heart sound can also be heard during the pregnancy which is due to the which is due to the rapid diastolic filling which is due to rapid diastolic filling and uh, very uncommonly there might be even S4 also uh, can be heard coming to the cardiac output in a pregnant woman uh, from the fifth week it starts to increase the cardiac output starts to increase because it is during the sixth week that there is increase in the blood volume as a result of this uh, increased blood volume there is also increase in the cardiac output and it will reach to its maximum uh, on th uh, 30 to 34 weeks that is there will be a 40 to 50 percent rise in the cardiac output in that interval and after that it becomes almost a static in nature uh, uh, in the supine position there is um, uh, in the supine position there is lowest cardiac output uh, noted and uh, if the person will be uh, lying
lying in a right or left lateral position or a knee chest position there will be maximum cardiac output seen in the patient uh, and then and the, uh, during the labor time there is a um, 50% increase in the cardiac output and even during the uh, immediately after delivery there is also 70% increase in the cardiac output the mean uh, uh, the map uh, the uh, MAP will be mean arterial pressure will also in get increased and there is auto transfusion of blood taking place what is this there is is that is it is a squeezing out of the blood from the uterus into the maternal circulation during the labor and in the immediate postpartum so this auto transfusion is the cause uh, uh, main cause uh, for increase in the cardiac output during labor and after delivery Coming to the cause of this, uh, the cause of is this is due to increased blood volume as well as the increased oxygen demand um, uh, um, which, which is noticed during the, uh, during the pregnancy and uh, cardiac output uh, will be increased particularly due to increased heart rate as well as it is also increased due to the uh, stroke volume. Remember that um, uh, it will take uh, one hour um, after immediately after uh, delivery to reach back to the pre uh, to reach back to the uh, pregnant state's um, cardiac output and. Um, uh, it will take uh, approximately four weeks or approximately one month uh, to reach the pre-pregnant state uh, state's cardiac output. Coming to the blood pressure, uh, the blood pressure is equal to cardiac output and SVR. SVR means systemic vascular resistance. There is decrease in the systemic vascular resistance. Why is this due to? It is due to the decrease uh, due to the hormonal effects and the muscular effect due to uh, as well as even due to the very important concept of the hemodilution also. Uh, all this. Uh, respon are responsible uh, for um, uh, for decreasing the um, BP of the uh, pregnant mother and there is also a decrease in the diastolic blood pressure as well as I mean arterial pressure um, approximately a 5 to 10 mm of Hg will be decreased the, here there is increase in the uh, due to the cardiac output there is increase in the MAP due to blood pressure there is decrease in the M MAP so as a result of it there is approximately very negligible changes of mean arterial pressure takes place during pregnancy coming to the uh, venous pressure and the anticubital veins uh, will uh, pressure will not be affected while the right common iliac vein have an increased pressure why is this uh, pressure increased it is increased um, uh, by the gravid uterus and uh, due to the dextro rotation of the uterus it presses on this uh, right ili uh, common iliac brain, um, vein and uh, increases its pressure and a non-pregnant uh, woman will have just uh, 8 to 10 centimeter of water pressure but a pregnant woman in the uh, supine position will have 25 centimeter waters of pressure and a pregnant woman who is uh, standing or in erect position will have 80 to 100 centimeter water pressure therefore approximately from a 8 centimeter it has increased 10 times to become 80 to 100 centimeter water pressure during the standing state so it is because of this that the pregnant woman is asked to, to rest so that um, uh, she will prevent edema of the uh, uh, right leg particularly the ankle edema of the right leg and this can be uh, much uh, fa have fasterly prevented uh, by using the uh, pillow or uh, keeping the legs raised. Coming to the concept of central hemodynamics, there is no significant changes in the CVP, MAP, PCWP although there is an increase in the blood volume, cardiac output and heart rate. The reasons are because of the significant fall in the SVR, uh, plus uh, pulmonary vascular resistance and the colloidal osmotic pressure. A very important uh, clinical aspect of this is the supine hypotension syndrome. Due to the supine position, the gravid uterus uh, presses upon the I in, uh, IVC that is the inferior vena cava. Uh, if there is collateral circulation, it does not cause much problems. But if the even the collateral circulation gets blocked, then it leads to hypotension. And this can be quickly restored uh, by turning the patient to the lateral position. Coming to the concept of metabolic changes, the pregnancy is um, 
an anabolic state and uh, there is uh, in the com coming to the com um, protein metabolism in the protein mo metabolism there is positive nitrogen balance taking place what do you mean by this there is increased transportation of the amino acids from uh, f uh, from the liver to other uh, body tissues and uh, so as a result of this decrease uh, there is decreased uh, urea levels in the body so basically in pregnancy there is decreased urea concentration uh, and almost um, uh, there is an increase in the uh, amino acid level concentration and um, and the uh, uric acid as well as the creatine levels remain unaffected during pregnancy coming to carbohydrate metabolism uh, in carbohydrate metabolism hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the beta cells takes place due to which there is increased insulin secretion taking place uh, as a result of which the sensitivity to the insulin receptors decreases gradually the, it so happens that there is an insulin resistance created in the during the pregnancy which um, makes it more um, uh, su su more suspicious to the uh, diabetes uh, pregnancy diabetes um, which is a physiological condition and um, uh, this can uh, later get restored also due to this insulin resistance there is a very important um, uh, event that takes place due to this insulin resistance uh, which is uh, increased availability of glucose to the fetus uh, remember that the glucagon levels will not get affected uh, over here during the pregnancy in the maternal fasting sometimes if the uh, mother fasts there is fasting hypoglycemia created there is hypoinsulinemia also created but overall effect of insulin is that there is hyperinsulinemia due to the anti-insulin factors and there is hyperlipidemia that is there is accumulation of lipids in the body and this uh, lipidemia is non-atherogenic in nature very important point and also there is hyperketonemia due to the fasting and uh, oral uh, glucose tolerance test will be usually done and um, uh, even oral glucose uh, challenge test is also done wherein 75 grams of uh, glucose will be uh, uh, per 100 ml of water will be asked to be uh, uh, drank by the pregnant woman and after two hours the bl blood sugar should be uh, recorded and it should not exceed beyond 150 uh, uh, milligram per deciliter coming to the fat metabolism there is three to four kgs of uh, increase in the fat stores and this is due to the increased hormonal levels which are the hormones responsible for all these metabolisms that is estrogen is responsible progesterone is responsible uh, human placental lactogen is responsible and lectins are also leptins are also responsible for all, for all these carbohydrates as well as fat metabolisms and uh, there is increase in the hdl concentration uh, but decreased uh, low low density uh, lipid concentration because of the steroid production uh, that takes place in the body which uses the ldl so it is a very good condition pertaining to the co cholesterol Coming to the iron metabolism, it um, the iron will be absorbed in the ferrous form only at the duodenum as well as in the jejunum. Total body requirement throughout the pregnancy is 1 gram or 1000 milligrams in pregnancy, not to be consumed with, uh, con confused with the daily requirement. Daily requirement will be particularly, uh, it will be more important uh, during the last trimester, that is in the third trimester particularly, uh, in case if the even if case uh, if the woman is not uh, anemic also. And the daily requirement will be usually 6 to 7 mg per menstrual loss will be 30 milligrams and per amenorrheic loss will be 1 uh, uh, milligram and uh, during the pregnancy there is inevitable iron deficiency state will be established and particularly iron supplement should have to be given during the second and third trimester whatever the iron that will be consumed will be stored either in the form of myoglobin or in the form of ferritin or uh, hemosiderins coming to the systemic changes uh, during pregnancy first is the respiratory system we'll talk about and the diaphragm gets elevated uh, due to the growing uterus as a result of it there is a decrease by 
फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल लंग कैपेसिटी देर इज थोरको अबडामिनल ब्रीथिंग और आई कैन से डायफ्रामेटिक ब्रीथिंग एंड देर इज ऑल्सो कार्डियो रेस्पिरेटरी डिस्ट्रेस ऑल्सो हैपन्स ड्यू टू दी एलिवेशन ऑफ द डायफ्राम ऑक्सीजन रिजर्व गेट रेड्यूस्ड एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द इंक्रीज कंजप्शन एंड ऑल्सो ड्यू टू द डिक्रीज फंक्शनल रेसिडियल कैपेसिटी देर इज देर आर मोर चांसेस ऑफ एपनिया रिमेंबर दैट इन प्रेगनेंट वुमेन देर इज इंक्रीज इन द रेस्पिरेटरी मिनिट वॉल्यूम एज वेल एज टाइडल वॉल्यूम ड्यू टू विच देर इज शॉर्टनेस ऑफ ब्रेथ ऑल्सो coming to the urinary system uh, the renal uh, plasma flow uh, gfr creatinine levels blood urea nitrogen and uric acid levels also increase but there is no uh, there is not much increase in the uric acid as well as the creatinine levels okay and uh, the ureters become atonic and dilated in nature why is this so because of the pres- uh, do, uh, because of the increased pressure uh, uh, put by the lifo rotation of the cervix which comes um, uh, in front and presses the ureters the, uh, the uh, there is increased pressure exerted on the ureters due to which there is increased hypertrophy of the muscles in the ureter as a result of it they become dilated and they become atonic uh, blocking the uh, making the passage narrower okay coming to the urinary bladder urinary bladder becomes edematous and uh, there is uh, polyuria and stress incontinence uh, the edematousness is due to the increased um, uh, hypertrophy of the muscles as well as of that of mucosa and the polyuria the polyuria is due to increased thirst caused by the natremia uh, 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 as well as the hyperkalemia and hypervolemia the stress incontinence is due to uh, excessive uh, continued excessive pressure applied and due to which the anal uh, i mean the the distal uh, the distal uh, urethral sphincter becomes weak coming to the git uh, the gum bleeding becomes more common muscle tone and motility decreases due to which it takes l- <coughs> larger time uh, for the digestion to take place mm-hmm. and uh, particularly it is due to the hormonal secretions and regurgitation also becomes common Uh, constipation also becomes common chances of peptic ulcers decreases uh, in pregnancy only the alkaline phosphatase levels will increase while the rest all will remain uh, unchanged there is increased blood cholesterol level and this favors the uh, gall bladder stone formation remember that due to the increased progesterone effects uh, there is also Eton- atonicity of the gall bladder taking place coming to the nervous system postpartum blues psychosis depression craving for uh, objects becomes uh, more com- uh, certain objects become more common in the pregnant women paresthesia and pain in the hand and arms uh, leads to carpal tunnel syndrome which is common also uh, and due to the uh, lateral uh, pre- compression of the uh, uh, thighs uh, there is lateral uh, there is Uh, insensitivity or decreased sensitivity of the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh coming to skeletal system uh, pregnant women will usually be uh, having a deficiency of calcium so she will be advised to take calcium tablets of approximately 1 gram per day um, uh, 1 gram per day should be taken uh, as supplements um, because of the increased demands of the fetus uh, for the for the development of skeletal system of the fetus as well as for the functioning of the various metabolic functions of the mother also there is increased calcium absorption taking place while the phosphate levels remain unaffected during the pregnancy when the fetus is small and it is just get uh, go, when it has just got implanted and uh, during the f- earlier stages of pregnancy the fetus has uh, some uh, uh, plenty of uh, a freedom of movement but uh, later in the later stages the fetus becomes uh, stagnant or fixed at a point and uh, in that case we need to determine the lie presentation presenting part attitude denominator and position of the fetus uh, so let's study what i mean by lie lie is the relation between uh, the longitudinal axis of the uterus as well as the longitudinal axis of the center of the uterus for example it can be a longitudinal lie uh, or it can be a transverse lie or it can be an oblique lie and some 
sometimes there might be an unstable lie also but remember that 99% of the cases the longitudinal lie will be seen coming to the presentation the uh, presentation means uh, the fetal part which is present at the lower pole of the uh, uterus is called as the presentation for example there might be a cephalic presentation that is cephalon means head head might be present at that point or there might be a podalic presentation poda means legs there might be presence of um, legs or the uh, near part of the leg that is the breech or buttock might be present or there might be sometimes shoulder presentation in case of transverse uh, lie and there might be an unstable uh, uh, lie can be uh, there in uh, in which case we can see a present compound presentation also and that is um, two uh, two or more uh, fetal parts might be seen at the lower pole coming to the presenting part a presenting part is a part of the presentation remember that presenting part is a part of the presentation itself uh, which is uh, pre present just above the internal os and uh, uh, for example uh, in cephalic presentation if you consider cephalic presentation in that there can be um, a vertex might be present above the internal os or there might be brow that might be present uh, above the internal os or might be face that will be present above the internal os let us consider in case of breach uh, in case of the breach uh, if you consider uh, there might be presence of um, uh, there might be a presence of complete breach when we when we say that it is a complete breach then it will have a um, uh, flexed um, uh, flexed breach also and when we when we say it is a frank breach then it has a extended extended vertex and uh, if there is present of just the foot then it is called as a uh, then it is called as a foot link okay coming to the uh, concept of attitude attitude is the relation uh, between the different parts of the fetus it is a relation between the different parts of the fetus to one another for example uh, if the uh, if the neck head is flexed uh, uh, till it reaches the neck then it can be called as the flexion attitude deflection attitude might be there extension attitude might be there remember that um, uh, the most common one is the flexion attitude during which um, uh, with the head flexion there is also also a flexion of most of the joints of the body giving the uterus an ovoid shape finally coming to the next one that will be the denominator denominator is just some arbitrary fixed bony point that is present on the that is present on the presenting part remember that the presenting parts definition is related to presentation while the uh, denominator is uh, dependent upon uh, the presenting part uh, for its definition therefore it is the arbitrary bony point on the presenting part that comes in relation with the various quadrants of the maternal pelvis for example occiput um, occiput if you consider that um, uh, vertex as the presentation vertex as the presenting part in the cephalic presentation in the cephalic presentation if you consider vertex as the presenting part um, the denominator will be occiput in cephalic presentation if you consider face as the present part then uh, the momentum might be the denominator here in that way coming to the next one that will be the position uh, position is relations of the relation of the denominator to different different parts of the pelvis for example relation of the occiput relation of the momentum to different parts of the pelvis for example uh, usually usually in the uh, cephalic presentation the left occipito anterior position of the um, uh, oc will be the most commonest one next would be the right occipital anterior position coming to the causes of preponderance of the longitudinal lie and the cephalic presentation uh, the fetus will be usually at the flexion attitude because that establishes a uh, ovoid shape to the fetus which will be very easier to pass through the maternal pelvis for a normal delivery to take place and, and the vertigo per podalic axis that is uh, from the vertex that is what we mean by vertex vertex is the highest point on the sagittal suture and podal podalic is the um, uh, is the point on the
the legs so the distance and or the diameter of this vertical protelic axis will be equal to 25 centimeters or 10 inches while the bis acromial diameter that is the, the distance between the two acromial processes of the fetus will be equal to 12 centimeters or 5 inches while the um, bitrochantric uh, diameter will be uh, 10 centimeter and or 4 inches and uh, the bis um, uh, biparietal diameter which is distance between the two um, uh, between the two uh, parietal eminences will be equal to 9.5 centimeter or 3 3 by 4 inches coming to the uh, next thing that is cephalic presentation is a majority of 99% uh, cases will have this presentation only it is because of two things it is because first is the adaptation adaptation means uh, the space provided uh, remember that the fundus will be um, growing maximally compared to the uh, cervix and the isthmus as a result of which uh, since the head occupies a smaller part where because of uh, lesser diameter of the head and therefore it will be uh, lying in the, uh, uh, the uh, in the bottom region that is at the presenting part while the circumference of the breech is little bit higher as a result of which it lies in the fundus region and even the gravitation also favors this uh, uh, this cephalic presentation itself okay coming to the method of obstetrical examination this is very important and uh, let us go with the abdominal examination first um, so the uh, what are the preliminaries before uh, before examining the patient you need to ask the consent of the patient uh, second thing is that she should be um, uh, first allowed to uh, empty her bladder and then uh, she should be asked to lie in a dorsal position with a left lateral uh, uh, tilt of 15 degrees and um, uh, her uh, abdomen should be fully exposed then stand to the right of the patient which is the basic thing coming to the next one 